everybody. It's Walter Parker, Minister Mortgage here. Um, Mitch is on his way. We're having some technical difficulties this morning, but we wanted to get started. We have an amazing, amazing lineup for you today on the Build Your Empire Virtual Mastermind 2020. Um, at this time, uh, before we get started, I just want to introduce to you our first guest we have this morning. So get your pen and papers out. Be ready to learn. We have the founder of Mortgage Coach, who's a mobile tech pioneer and a mortgage industry agent of change, a renowned speaker and keynote at Mastermind events. Dave is committed to educating, preparing lenders and loan officers for the digital mortgage revolution. To date, he has interviewed more than 1,000 industry leaders and the Mortgage Coach channel has been described as the most valuable YouTube channel for mortgage professionals. And so we, I, it's with great pleasure, I'm gonna to introduce to you today, Dave Savage. Dave, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good, it is good to be here, kicking off this uh, event. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm going to get out of the way and, and let you speak. And then, if anybody has any comments or questions, please put it in the uh, in the in the chat as far as below, and uh, Dave will be happy to address it. Right? I mean, we're we're here to uh, educate and inform today, right? I abs absolutely, guys. So this is a this is a cool innovation. I speak on a lot of uh, virtual stages, whether that's a small meeting with one person, whether that's a group meeting with my internal team. And, and it, I've been doing more and more of these virtual, I, I guess, keynotes. Uh, so this is cool. It looks like we've got a private Facebook group going on uh, that you guys have signed up for. I will keep an eye in comments just to make sure I'm using this right. And I know you guys know how to use this. If you wanna let me know what state or city you're in, uh, just so I can see if I'm speaking to an audience or not. Uh, or whether I'm speaking to a recorded audience and you're not watching this live, but you are watching the recording still put in city and state. Where are you coming to us live from? I am coming to you live from Lake Oswego, Oregon, just outside of Portland. It's been very sunny, very hot. Uh, it's only going to get into the, the high 70s today and it's not sunny and hot at the moment. I'm pretty pumped about that. Uh, so I am going to talk about being the most valuable loan officer. A lot of people want to be the most successful loan officer. And I believe the, 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 the fastest path, the best path. Thank you. You got someone from Loden. Loden, welcome to the call. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you that the, you want to be successful, be the most valuable loan officer. And check it out. We got someone from Texas. We have someone from Glendale. Uh, thank you, guys. It's good to know I'm not alone. And uh, please ask questions along the way. Irvine, California, that's our corporate headquarters. Uh, I grew up in Huntington Beach, went to high school there, lived in Laguna, and then started Mortgage Coach in Irvine. West Covina, what's going on? Uh, so, so I love to make this as interactive as possible. I'm gonna try to share my screen. Let's see if this works. Uh, make sure I got the right keynote. All right. So, so this is just a quote I would push everybody to write down. And I, I have this written down in multiple places on yellow sticky notes. I've got it on a slide. I build it into presentations just to remind me. I mean, this is not my quote. I don't know who wrote it. Uh, I just know that I, I try, to, try to live this way every day in every way. Uh, I'm gonna build this presentation around not ideas that I think are important, but ideas that other people are, think are important. Now, one thing you need to know about me is I always have had a passion for technology. Uh, not because I'm a developer and I'm a nerd, but because I'm real deal ADD and real deal dyslexic. And I love spell check. <laughs> when, I, when technology could fix my spelling, I fell in love. And I fell in love with video because I've never misspelled a word in a video. So to me, technology is all about the problems that it solves and the consumer experience that it can create. Now, I, I think I was blessed because I was born into a technology revolution. And so my, my, I guess, weaknesses that drove me to technology became a huge gift. So Mortgage Coach has been around for a little over 10 years, prior, excuse me, 20 years. Prior to Mortgage Coach, I was a top producing loan officer. A lot of people don't know the actual name of Mortgage Coach is not Mortgage Coach. It's called Wow Tools, just Wow Tools. That was my breakthrough in sales when I learned how to wow people consistently. And as you can see from these discs, I've been doing this for a long, long time. Uh, today, I'm proud of the fact that 34% of America's most successful loan officers use Mortgage Coach, and we define that 
is anyone does that does over 100 loans annually. We've got uh, a lot of the nation's biggest and best lenders as clients, seven of the top 10. So, so let's talk about what is the digital shift. I talk about like winning and crushing it, saving time, closing more loans in this digital shift. And guys, this is the digital shift. It happened when the iPhone hit the market and, and you gave a family the power to do anything and everything in the palm of their hand. And, and today we live in this little area in the middle that I call the digital shift era. There, there will be a point, I don't know if it's 2027, that's what I put in this uh, slide at the time. I, you know, I do think the, the, the digital shift started in 2007 when the iPhone hit the market. Uh, and I do think like 20 years from that moment, I think things will be fairly unrecognizable, extremely more efficient the consumer experience. Think about how much the consumer experience has just changed over the past 10 years. So think about how much more it's going to change over the next five and seven years. Uh, so at Mortgage Coach, we're all about giving families a total cost analysis. And people call it different things, but that's that's what we do. One of the and kind of some important things to note, because they, they fall into the presentation and the takeaways that I'm going to give you today, uh, they all come from interviews through our community. So if you're not connected with us on Facebook, we have a Facebook group, Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. If you're not in our YouTube channel, you've got to check it out. This was our number one interview from 2019, Shayla Gifford, America, one of America's top loan officers. This is the number one interview in our YouTube channel for 2020. What's your rate? Where I just had a lot of top producing loan officers and I said, hey, what's your rate? And we got to hear what and how they said it. But what I, what I did today is I, I said, okay, I wanted to prepare to deliver some just really netted out value. And I also wanted to incorporate some things I've heard over the past 30 and 45 days. So this is from an interview of Brian Morley, uh, does probably gonna do about 170 million in production this year, usually does about hundred million. And he shopped six different lenders in the last 30 days. And he had some takeaways that I'm gonna share with you today. Uh, I interviewed uh, Ryan Grant, and his team about how he's working with CPAs and financial planners. Ryan usually closed, well, last year he closed 185 million. I mean, he's gonna close well over 250 this year, killing it. I'm gonna share some takeaways from that interview. I recently interviewed Tom Ferry with Dan Keller. You'll be hearing from Dan in a couple hours. I'm gonna share one takeaway from this that I think is super important. And then, um, a weekend ago, I read the S1 from the Quicken, uh, Quick is Going Public, their IPO. And I'm going to share a few takeaways from that. Uh, if you did not see the interview I did with Ryan, um, Ryan Hills, he interviewed me for the RE Source TV. Check this out, guys. It's only 22 minutes. I think Ryan is a masterful interviewer. Uh, it's going to tie to a takeaway from Tom Ferry. And it's just a good follow up. All right, so here, here is takeaway number one. Feel free to write this down. This is my quote. And, and this is what got me to found the company Wow Tools, is that most people, not most, like everybody knows the difference between good and bad. Like that's obvious to everyone. But what's not obvious is that it's good, great, and wow. And, and I find that so many loan officers so many human beings don't know that they're seeing great and wow. And so many people, no matter how easy it is to do the wow versus the great, they choose to do the good. And, and so I'm gonna talk about that. I'm also gonna talk about leadership in technology because while technology is powerful, leadership is the most important force in the, in the mortgage business. So, so two things I want everybody to think about. Number one, most loan officers are losing three loans or more per month. And I'd be willing to bet in today's refi uh, boom, you guys are losing more than three loans a month by just being a little more efficient, a little more effective. And then the other thing, you know, is that most loan officers aren't making the kind of margin they could make. I put in this 18 basis points because we've done a lot of studies. Now, again, this is with distributed retail, loan officers that are being paid on basis points, mortgage banking, loan officers, but most loan officers are losing basis points. And I don't care whether you're a banker or a broker, it's pretty rare that I talk to a loan officer that's optimizing both loan conversion, closing all the loans they could and should be, and doing it the most profitably they can be. So, so, so here is the first key concept. 
some of you may have heard me talk about this before. If you have heard this before, uh, I think it bears repeating. Uh, but when, when you think of what makes the most successful loan officers, you've got to read the challenger sales. And what I'm going to share with you over the next three minutes, this is what makes the most successful salespeople. So this is a book. It's like a good to great where they studied over 5,000 different salespeople from dozens of companies like Microsoft, like ADP, not necessarily mortgage, not mortgage companies, but the largest, most successful sales forces and sales organizations in America. And, and then they took these loan officers, or not the loan officers, these salespeople and said, who are the most successful? Top 10% performers. And they, they fit under certain profiles. Some of these top 10 percenters were hard workers, and that was their superpower. Some of them were relationship reps. That was their superpower. Some of them were problem solvers, and that was their superpower. And some of them were lone wolves, and that was, you know, just, hey, I have my way, and they kill it. And then, of course, some of these top 10 percenters were the challenger sales rep, the challenger. So now the book is called The Challenger. So you probably know that the number one, the majority of the top 10%, they were the challenger rep. Here's a question I want to ask you guys right now uh, in this virtual world. I'd love for you to put it in comments. Which one of these categories came in second and which one came in dead last? Like who came in last, who came in second? Now, usually when I'm talking to a big group, people kind of blurt out and usually people will say the challenger rep or the, the number two was the relationship builder. And most groups will say the lone wolf came in last. Here's the reality, guys. Lone wolf came in second. Now, again, you can't scale a team. They're not necessarily the best team leaders, nor do they make the best of their team, but they, they execute. Lone wolves kick ass. Uh, who came in last was the relationship builder. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through the challenger framework, and I think you'll buy this. When I was reading the book and it kind of uncovered this, I was like, oh, no, this doesn't make sense. Relationships are where it's at. Well, guys, here, here is the challenger framework. This is what they defined as the most, you know, those challenger reps. This is what they did. These were the, the habits and skills that they had. They tailored. They asked great questions so they could personalize. They, they teach for value. The way that they define the value that they create in the sales process is teaching the consumer, teaching the prospect something that they didn't already know, or getting them to look at it, look at things in a different way, and they control for influence. So this is this was the big difference between the relationship rep and the challenger rep, is that the, the relationship rep is often a people pleaser, often is not great with tension uh, and stress, uh, and they're generous with their time. Whereas the, the challenger sales rep, tailor, teach, control, and they did it wrapped in what they called constructive tension. They knew again, constructive tension is the essence of leadership. So, so this is super important. I don't care whether you're a broker, whether you're a banker, I don't care what your model is, I don't care how you do business. The most successful loan officers in America, the most productive loan officers in the digital shift era, it's all about teaching the consumer something they hadn't considered. And it's about doing that in a way that they'll always remember it. So I, I think we don't compete with each other. We compete with ourselves in our ability to execute for that family, our ability to get lots of leads so that we have lots of families to compete with. And then, and then I say, guys, we're in the mortgage business. We're competing with every other advisor that family meets with, every CPA, every financial planner. Uh, we want to be the advisor that they'll never forget. So, so this is another key concept. Be the captain of the wealth team. And that never came more clear than in my interview with Ryan Grant, where when you, if you watch that interview, by the way, Ryan not only kills it with CPAs and financial planners, he has become the preferred lender for Facebook. So Facebook has over 400,000 employees and Ryan was able to convince them because he is the captain of the wealth team because he brings value to the borrower beyond a mortgage transaction. He was able to get Facebook to say, hey, you're our preferred lender. Wasn't because of their rates, wasn't because of their programs. Those, you know, they had to check the box. Like, yeah, legit lender. Yeah, competitive rates. Yes, 
they are compliant. So they check those are Beck checkers, box checkers. But the reason Ryan was able to win that business because he's delivering more value for that family and he's creating a memorable advice experience. So let's talk about that. What is a good, what is a bad, and what is a wow advice experience? So, so here's the deal, guys. Uh, this was a takeaway for Brian, Brian Morley. He went and shopped six different lenders and he got six different rate sheets that look like this. Uh, some of them had a logo. Some of them didn't have a logo. Some of them were email, were an actual email. Some of them were a PDF that he had to print out. But they all had one thing in common. Uh, it was rate, it was payment, and it was cash to close. There was no value beyond the transaction itself. And they were, it wasn't great marketing. It wasn't unique. It wasn't memorable. Uh, it did not help him become the most memorable loan officer to that family. It was a commodity. And so one of the things we teach at Mortgage Coach, we teach how to go become a black belt at mortgage advice. And so to be a black belt, you need to start with a white belt. You need to have a white belt value prop. And just about every loan officer in America has a white belt value prop. And it's something to the effect of, I'm fast, I'm convenient and easy, and I have great rates. That is the white belt value prop. And you gotta start there. Like you gotta have that base in order to be a black belt. The black belt question that every loan officer in America asks is, how long do you plan to live in your home? And then all the advice they give is powered from that one question. Now, here's the deal, guys. The black belt loan officer just might ask one more question, might ask two more questions, might ask several, but they're going to deliver advice and value that's unique. And I'm going to walk you through a framework that if you build scripts around this, I promise you, if you just listen carefully for the next, uh, let's see how much more time do I got, for the next 15 minutes, like next 15 minutes, you will close new, more loans next month and you will save more time so don't do a fee worksheet loan off for fee worksheet loan officer so i'm gonna i'm gonna share what jeremy forcier does so jeremy closed 299 loans in 2019 his goal for 2020 was 300 loans he has passed that goal so by the end of this week he'll have closed 300 loans for the year and let me walk you through what he's doing if you want to hear the interview i did with him i'll put a link down below to it but one in the digital shift era, he's taking a lot of his apps with a link. Uh, so he's forwarding a link and then he's asking questions. And when he gives like, hey client, I heard you. One, he's always giving options. I don't care whether it's on their mobile device. This, this happens to be a total cost analysis, but he's, he's trying to get that video to stop. Sorry about that, guys. So so he's using Calendly more than ever, and I'm hearing. Hey guys, uh, sorry about that. Looks like we may have uh, lost Dave to some technical issues. So uh, I just want to jump in here. I apologize. Uh, you, you missed me this morning when we started because of some technical issues. So um, welcome to the Build Your Empire Mastermind Summer 2020. Um, we'll uh, give us a minute while we get Dave back online. Uh, looks like maybe he's having some uh, internet connection issues. Uh, let's talk about, a little bit about today, uh, what we got coming up while we wait. Um, so after Dave, we're going to be joined by Jonathan Geppert uh, with the insurance team. Uh, he is one of our sponsors. After that, we're going to hear from Mike Cortis. Uh, he is co-founder of Nexa Mortgage. 
um, the fastest growing uh, mortgage brokerage company in the U.S. And uh, let's take a look here. Later on today, after that, we have Jonathan Fowler. Um, then we'll follow that up with Dan Keller. So uh, just give us a couple minutes here. <clears throat> See if I can get Dave back on. Give me one second here, folks. All right. <clears throat> See if we can get Dave back on here. Are you in there, Walter? Hey, Mitch. Hey, there you are. All right, I sent uh, Dave a message. Um, <clears throat> I thought that was very interesting what he was talking about, um, you know, as far as, because I, I, that immediately, if I got one takeaway already, it's that the relationship guy was last out of all five of those personality types. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be checking out that book. Um, you know, that, that was some really good stuff and, and you know, always believe in, in following the leader and learning from those that are just crushing and killing it. And uh, that was already an eye opener this morning as far as with that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. And the great thing is, you know, Dave's uh, interviewed over a thousand, you know, mortgage professionals in his yeah. career. Um, so he's, he's spoken to the best of the best, you know, day in, day out. And if you're part of his group, um, you know, you definitely know that he brings in, you know, the best of the best and, and they talk about their processes all the time. Um, if you're not in his group, I definitely uh, highly suggest, you know, going and joining because, uh, <clears throat> I mean, his, his goal is to provide value and education uh, for the loan officer and mortgage broker. And I mean, he does that on a daily basis, bringing in guys like Dan Keller and George. Uh, George. Oh, here he goes. He is back. All right, guys. So, uh, has anybody ever been in a live event and the lights went out? Like the electricity just goes out? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> my, my electricity didn't go out, but my computer did. And I had plenty of batteries. So, anyways, guys, that was a virtual uh, power outage uh, coming to you live from Portland, Oregon. Uh, I hope you guys did not like leave the event, like, oh, we're out of here. <laughs> uh, I, I guarantee, though, Everybody like picked up their phone and they're like, okay, multitasking, is this dude coming back? <laughs> well, it, it just is fitting considering I wasn't able to join the beginning when uh, you started because my computer decided to do a 25 minute reboot up until the, the time of the event. So I, I feel your pain. Yeah, so apologies folks. So Mitch, anything you wanna ask or say before I get back on track with uh, sharing some ideas? Well, no, I uh, just one thing I, I was just telling them while you're gone to make sure if they're not a member of your group to go join right away. Um, so, you know, make sure you give them uh, the details for, you know, finding your group and uh, your YouTube channel, because I think everybody that's in the mortgage industry needs to be following both of those. Thank you very much, brother. And guys, after I speak, I will go into this session in the group and put a few links to connect with us on social media and anybody who wants to be a mortgage coach member, I'll put a link for that. So I, I am looking at the public chat here and you guys did a pretty nice job at the kickoff of uh, let me know what state you were in. I, I would really like to know, uh, are you using schedule automation technology like a um, Calendly? And are you using uh, Zoom or one of their competitors and the other, what I see just essential part of the tech stack uh, is, you know, video software and mortgage coach. And I don't need to ask you if you use a mortgage coach because I know, and we have a, a very big audience of top producers using it. 
But those those really are the technologies that if you are not using Zoom or a competitor, if you're not, I'm not saying schedule every meeting with Calendly. Like and I'm not saying force people to do it. Uh, sometimes you know I'm really playing. Hey, what's a good time for you to meet? And and or and then I put or if it's easier for you or or schedule 15 minutes with 15 minutes with me here. Guys, 80% of the people click the link. So huge time saving strategy for you. But but the most important thing, guys, it, it really is becoming the most valuable loan officer and being that that wow producer. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen again. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through mortgage advice. So if you look at what what is mortgage advice? First of all, if you are not giving the family options. It is not mortgage advice. It's called rate quoting. It's called delivering a fee worksheet. It's called a commodity experience. So, so you have to give options. If you want to be an advisor, you can close loans without being a mortgage advisor. Uh, I would just make the case, and if you read my article about Quicken, is that if you're a local referral-based professional, it's a really good idea to be an advisor versus a loan officer transaction deal person. Uh, so it's got to have options. The other thing it needs to do is it needs to have strategy and it needs to show families how to how to either build wealth with real estate faster or how to reduce their interest costs. So this is a ninja move that a lot of black belt mortgage advisors do when they're doing refi, especially in today's market. It Oh no! We, we might have another virtual uh, blackout there with his uh, where he's at in Portland. So we'll be uh, tuning him back in as soon as he uh, is able to get back on. Um, mortgage. I will say this for mortgage coach. I have a really good friend of mine in California, and he takes the mortgage coach, and he will literally utilize that and make videos for all of his clients. Wins the deal uh, almost every single time. He's an incredible broker. He's he's one of those hundred million dollar producers. Uh, so I can absolutely vouch for what he's saying as far as you, the, using, utilizing the right tools to make yourself stand out. Um, and I'm not trying to teach or say his stuff, but just as a testimonial uh, while we're waiting for him to get back on. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, I've heard great things about the mortgage coach and, and their, you know, their system and how much it helps, you know, and the people that I hear from are top producers, you know, so. Uh, yeah. That's, that's the key is, you know, top producers are using this technology, um, you know, including, you know, like I said, Dan Keller, Jeremy Forcier, um, you know, guys like that. So it's a great community to be a part of, um, that's for sure. Um, you know, our, my good friend Todd Bookspan's on there helping him a lot um, with uh, providing value and, and education to uh, to everybody. So. Anybody out there have questions for Dave uh, when he gets his uh, internet or computer back online? We apologize for the uh, issues here. Just uh, drop your comments in there and then when he gets back, we'll definitely uh, ask him to follow up on those. He just sent me a message that he's getting back on, so I do apologize Excellent. for that. And by the way, I'm not taking fashion advice or Nelly here. <laughs> Is it hot in there? Uh, yeah. I <laughs> I cut my face and uh, it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't stop. So Band-Aid, Nelly style it is. I was about to say that you were, you were trimming off the eye beard. Yeah, <laughs> lot, right? Yeah, right. <clears throat> cut it and, uh, you know, with the face, it, it never wants to stop, I guess. So figured I'd try out the Nelly thing. Reminds me of the old uh, kids from watching the reboot of, you know, uh, Full house and Dave Coulier cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just kills me because you know when I was growing up, Nelly was all the rage. So you know the the band aid was just cool. You know. Yeah. It was like, but you know, who thought of that? Like, what was he one day? He was like, you know what? To make myself different, I'm gonna, you know, it's all branding. You know, he put 
something silly on his face that no one else would have thought of. And, you know, it might have, he, might have helped him launch his career. He probably fell out of the shower and <laughs> just had a little bruise and said, I'm going to wear a Band-Aid. I'm going to own it. I'm just going to wear it and put it on the video. And, and there you go. The rest is history. Yeah. And, and I saw uh, on Facebook the other day, it was like a meme. And, it, you know, it was Nelly without a Band-Aid. And he was like, they were like, finally, after all these years, he's finally, <laughs> he's finally better. It's healed. Yeah. He's finally he's finally healed. So <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, so let's talk about, you know, what's coming up. I, I I guess uh from your point of view, who is uh you know, who are you looking forward to hearing from um, you know, the most coming up here today? That's kinda like asking a parent who's your favorite child, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? We, we really have just I mean, everyone, including the wrap up. I mean, we have just some phenomenal stuff. It looks like a Dave's jumping back in. I'm gonna I'm gonna bow out and uh, put Dave back on here. Three, two, and one. Hey guys. Uh, hey Dave. <laughs> I don't know. Third time's a charm. I don't know what's going on here in Portland, but uh, apologies. Does look like we got someone from Bellevue to comment that uh, using Calendly use Zoom a lot. So uh, nice nice job there, Mitch. Any other questions come in or anything else you want to cover before I get back after it? Ah uh, no, I don't think so. Just go ahead and uh, and go go right after it. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm not gonna share. I might share another slide at some point, but I, I have a feeling that that might be what's causing the technology challenge. Is that uh, somehow there's a conflict with uh, me sharing my screen? So I'm gonna share some ideas without sharing too many more slides. Uh, I do want to make a point, and I want you guys to write these down. So I have a slide for it. Uh, it's called the three essentials to a smart mortgage decision. I'll show it in a few minutes. I want to get towards the tail end and then I'll show some visuals. But the three essentials to a smart mortgage decision are number one, you know, write down the number one, mortgage options. If you're not giving mortgage options, the family's not making the smartest possible decision. And then from a science of conversion, a science of selling perspective, when you give a family options and they pick one of those options, they own it they're invested in it so it's it's not like they're picking the option and they're picking the loan officer there's a greater level of trust that comes also options are a greater level of transparency which is key to trust uh number two always analyze the cost over different times that are relevant for the family so brian morley in that interview earlier where i said hey he interviewed five loan officers or maybe it was six uh and they all just gave a fee worksheet. So none of them gave options. And none of them asked the asked him, what are your goals? Like, what do you, you know, what's your real estate goal over the next five years, 10 years? And, you know, when do you want to have your home paid off? You know, what's your financial goal with this? He was going to buy a beach home uh, an hour from his drive. What are your goals? No one did that. Everybody was just transaction, you know, 30 year fixed rate with points, with two points. You know, it was all about the loan. It wasn't about the goals. And they didn't show the options over time. So one is options. Two is show the cost over time. And then number three, so there's three essentials to a smart mortgage decision. Number three is always analyze strategies that reduce cost and increase wealth. And for the most part, you're either going, hey, family, should you prepay your mortgage and pay it off faster? Or should you invest it, some of that money in an offset account and and you you know you're building up um, more liquidity, and that and that brings up a, mo a move up strategy. This comes from uh, Tom Ferry. When I asked him, Tom, do you think it's smart for mortgage professionals in today's market to be doing Zoom or virtual webinars with realtors for their customers? And he's like, oh, heck yeah! And he started telling stories of realtors and loan officers that are doing this, and they're killing it. And one of the biggest stories in the marketplace right now. Uh, aside from refinance, and you know that is the biggest story, and to be able to help a family go, hey, a refi is more than just reducing your monthly payment. A refi is paying off your house faster and becoming debt free faster. So getting families to recast what a refinance means always go for the long term value. The other hot strategy in this today's market is a move up analysis. There are a lot of families that are sitting on equity who have a dream of a house that's different than the one that they have. So they have a dream, they have equity, and they don't have as much money in the bank or in, a, in liquid as they want. 
let's face it, guys, after COVID, how much money you want to have at the bank, how much money you want to have immediate access to has changed forever. So there's a lot of families that can have all three of those things. And I've got a, a number of stories to show. I'm going to wait until my last five or 10 minutes and I'll pull it up and visually show you how to, how to show this to a family. But I, I want you to go out looking with realtors, looking for families that could have enough equity that they could sell their home, take a hundred thousand, improve their cash position, be more liquid and could buy a bigger home, get a dream home. They, they, they have the wherewithal to do it. They have enough equity between selling, putting a hundred in the bank and then take that other amount of money and, and buy the house and, and then vision cast that over time. Say, hey, column one is your current home. Just keep what you're doing. Uh, Brian Morley, the one I'm gonna show you even had a, you could refi right now. So, hey, do a refi and this is what it looks like. Or what if you moved up? What if you, and in this particular case, in the scenario that I'm gonna put in chat, and I'm going to show you guys in a minute. In fact, I'm going to just put it in chat right now so everybody can click on it, kind of get ahead of me. Uh, so another key thing, links are everything. I mean, we live in this link economy. Uh, oh, how do I put a chat? Okay, host, uh, move up TCA. All right, I'm sending this. I don't know if I'm able to send it to everybody, but hopefully uh, Mitch, you, or someone can take that and share it with everybody. We'll put it in links down below. And, and if we can't get it to you live, I'll get it to you in the recording. But but that be guys looking for that. And think, think about it. If you could go with a realtor and say, hey, hey, what families do you have that have enough equity that they can put 100 in the bank, buy their bigger home, and I'll vision cast it for them. And the situation that um, we put in a link down below, the family was actually gonna build $500,000 more equity. And so they were getting 100,000 in the bank. They were building more wealth to the tune of $500,000 over 15 years, and they were getting their dream home. Guys, not only are you killing it for your client when you find that, but you're creating an incremental transaction for your agent. So advice, be a mortgage advisor. Don't just be able to say, hey, I got great rates. I close loans on time. Do you want to loan with points, without points? Uh, that's white belt. Every loan officer could do that in America now. If you want to not worry about Quicken Mortgage, not worry about Amazon Mortgage, you want to what I call W-A-Z, well, write this down, W-A-C-D. It stands for what Amazon can't do. If you were a specialty retailer, if you were anybody but Amazon, You've been working on WACDing your business. And, and, and I think every local referral-based mortgage professional needs to WA and then add a Z to it, add a Q to it. You need to get it so that your mortgage doesn't care about national platforms. Like national platforms, big brands, low rates, great. There will be an audience for that. There will be customers for that. But I want you to have it so that regardless of that, your mortgage practice is like a snowball rolling down a hill. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the key to that comes from that challenger sale. It's about personalizing. It's about taking national data, localizing it. Hey, I'm a hyper local specialist. Okay, this is what uh, appreciation rates are nationally. This is what they are locally. And then personalizing that. So family, what do you think appreciation rates are gonna do? Family, what do you think rates are going to do? And then I'm going to personalize that with you with options. All right. So I wanted to get a couple things that I, I just think are huge values for you guys in today's market. This came from my interview with Jeremy Forcier and a site visit I did with Jeremy. And I will put a link to less than a two minute video. I mean, one and a half minute video after this call. It's called Jeremy Forcier's We Love Helping You email. That's the title of it. And, and this, is, this is the big idea. This is the script. I want you guys to save time and get more loans. So and, and this may be the easiest thing and the most guaranteed more loan thing you'll learn for the next two days is I want you to start asking for referrals for everybody in your current pipeline differently than you're doing it today. A lot of loan officers ask people for referrals. A lot of them do it in that initial consultation. Uh, 
but the, the best way, the difference with going from great to wow way, the wow way to do it is to wait until that consumer says thank you. Might be when they get their initial approval. It might be clear to close. You know, at some point in the loan process, if you're doing a good job and you have a happy customer, uh, by the way, don't even ask for a referral if it's not a good job and it's not a happy customer. But if you're doing a good job, happy customer, and they say thank you, in that moment, not a day later, not a minute later, in that moment, you send an email and don't reinvent this. The script is subject line. We love helping you. Then in the in the the the, the message is can you help me with something? Question mark space. My goal this year is to work with more people I like, period, space. Can you introduce me to two people you think I should know and you think I can help in the future? Period, or question mark, space, that's it. Just end with a question, cut and paste this, make this a signature so you can easily do it. And I, I guarantee everybody that follows this strategy and this script, you will get more referrals, like not next week, you will get more referrals over the next 24 hours. If you just start like, when does a customer say thank you? And you strategically consistently ask for the referral the way I just described, it'll be huge for you. Um, remember guys, if you have questions, put them down below. Someone said way to go. Uh, uh, hope everyone's enjoying your time. All right, we're getting some good feedback there. Thanks guys. Uh, so let's see what I wanna make sure I cover before this time runs out. I guess I'm gonna pull up some scripts because that's the other thing is I think that the best salesperson, the best marketer will always have a seat at the table. So I'm gonna just go through the white belt and then I'm gonna show some black belt scripting and then we'll open it up for some Q and A uh, and we'll see how much time we have left. All right, so I am gonna share my screen I guess I'm taking a little bit of a risk but we're getting to that time. Uh, let's see if I can just share my screen. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's see if this works out a little better. All right. So guys, this is, like I said, the white belt value prop, white belt question. Here is the black belt value prop. My advice helps you build wealth with real estate faster by helping you make smarter mortgage decisions. And then I coach you over time to ensure that you always have the best mortgage to achieve your goals. That's black belt. Now I want everybody as an exercise coming out of my session is to write down what is your value prop. I interviewed Todd Duncan uh, about a week ago and this was his value prop statement. This is how he shows up for a family. Most lenders will quote you a rate within the first three minutes of speaking to you. How I'm different, I'm a mortgage strategist. Uh, you were referred to me by X because they value that difference. Again, you can add your own words to this. There are dozens of variables, hundreds of variables to give you a rate and a program and one that's best for you and your family to achieve your goals. What most customers don't realize is that the lowest rate with the long mortgage strategy, strategy, you always want to build that in your conversation, could cost you more than slightly a higher interest rate. Our approach is to custom design with the total cost analysis, so we use at Mortgage Coach, with a couple options, Todd said three to five, that integrate into your long-term and short-term goals. So, so guys, this was Todd's script. Have, have your script have a black belt value proposition. And, and I would just say, make sure it's got the word mortgage strategies because strategy always trumps rate. And even if you're a broker and you have the best rate and rate is part of your value prop, you're, you're gonna be more compelling. You're gonna close more business. You're gonna get more referrals if you focus on the strategy. Like the rates take care of itself. For those of you that don't know what a strategy is, it's really simple. This is the definition of a mortgage strategy, guys. It's gotta have, two or more programs. It's got to show short and long-term goals. It's really that simple. You know, that is a strategy. Guys, take a picture of this. This is the three essentials that I talked about earlier. So uh, get a little screenshot of that. Uh, if anybody 
misses it, I'll get you a link to it later. This guys, this is this is what a mortgage strategy looks like. Like this is what it looks like for a loan officer that's killing it with advice. You can notice that he's showing a client, hey, this is currently what you have. This is your current home. Uh, you can stay. You could refinance and you can save $472 a month. And you know what you could also do? You could buy a bigger home. Yes, your monthly payment is going to go up. So it has to be a client that can afford for their payment to go up. But here's the beauty, guys. Not only can you sell that home and buy a new home, you can put some money in the bank, anywhere from $70,000 to 120000 And at a 4% rate of return in 15 years, that's going to be $273,000. So, so again, showing people strategies and then showing people the long-term value of their decision-making. So they're like, hey, stay with what you're at, do a refi or buy a bigger home, put some money in the bank. One has $500,000 more equity in five years. So again, mortgage strategies is where it's at. Here's another mortgage strategy where a top loan officer is saying, hey, you can just buy a principal residence or you can buy a home plus a rental. And, and he even shows how you can be pretty much payment neutral, you know, within a couple hundred dollars um, in payment. And then of course, mortgage advice, what's the value? Over 15 years, in this case, it's over $700,000, um, 300,000, almost 400,000 if they bought one house. So, so be that loan officer, you know, if you get nothing else from your time with me on this call is be that loan officer that goes beyond the transaction and delivers advice. Tailor for personalization, teach so the family thinks of things they hadn't considered, and then control the conversation, manage the relationship, uh, you know, be candid with the client. So I am going to see if we have any questions. Um, and Mitch, do you have any questions for me or anything before we wrap this up? Uh, I'm taking a look here. I don't see uh, I don't see anybody with any questions. If anybody has any questions, drop them below. And uh, like I said, Dave will drop his link to his group and to his YouTube page. I highly suggest that everybody goes and follows both of those. If you're you know in the mortgage industry, it's going to uh, you know definitely change your business in, in a positive way. Yeah, I love the, someone just said, love the black belt. Thank you. Value prop is so important uh, for anybody that is interested in being part of, you know, the mortgage coach community. I want to share my screen one more time just to make sure you guys know what we do. Uh, when you think when you think of mortgage coach, it's absolutely the total cost analysis. We are a SaaS technology company, but we believe in community. So the best loan officers connecting on Facebook, on our YouTube channel. I interview great loan officers every single week. Uh, so it's community. And then it's training. It's taking some of that content, some of that best content, and, and creating a gamification program so you can go from white belt to black belt and building that into our technology platform. So that, that is what Mortgage Coach is. Uh, but again, you can join our Facebook group, Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. Uh, the book name, again, is The Challenger Sale. Uh, I'll show that on my screen uh, real quick, just so you can uh, take a quick, quick screenshot of it. So the book is right up. Boom. Get a photo. Uh, Matthew Dixon, Brett, Brett Anderson. Yeah, Adamson, uh, the challenger, taking control of the com customer conversation. You'll never read a better book in sales. I mean, it is just pure money. When you, when you really think about that, it's super powerful. Any other questions? Go in once, go in twice. Uh, can you put the three options back on the screen? Okay, I'll put the three back uh, options. And then I do have to jump because you need to hear a word from your sponsor and we need to get the next speaker up. Uh, Mitch, great job on uh, putting together this event. There are the three essentials one more time. Uh, I'll even put it in a big screen. 
get a photo. There's also a download to that in our Facebook group. Uh, I actually also just put a, a download, a printable version of my article um, about Quicken in our group. So check it out. I'm out. Hope you got value from today with, uh, with myself and enjoy the other sessions. Awesome, Dave. Hey, I appreciate it very much for uh, coming on and all you've done to uh, help us get this thing going today. I know uh, it was enjoyable and we both have experienced some issues with technology. So <laughs> let's uh, let's keep it going. And uh, thanks again, Dave. Uh, right now we're going to bring in Jonathan Geppert. He is uh, with the insurance team. Uh, we're going to give him a few minutes on the stage here to talk about what he does and, uh, you know, how we can help you guys. Great. Thank you for having me this morning. Um, Jonathan Gephardt here with the insurance team. And I uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about our company and how we can help uh, help your help your loans and help your processors and help your borrowers uh, in the transaction. So um, first thing I want to talk about is, um, let's get over here, is uh, when to start the insurance process. So it's really, really uh, important to start the process early on. Um, there's a lot of things that can that can change the rate um, you know, it's, it's really, really important to make sure you get a solid, reliable policy quote um, right out front. Nothing's going to change. Um, so a couple things that can change the, the quote is going to be, um, you know, the quote date in relation to when, when the policy is actually going to start. So if you're able to get a quote right up, right up front, um, you know, and, and you have at least, you know, 21, 30 days until closing, that quote's going to be good. So when you need to bind it, um, you're going to get the early start discount, things of that nature. Um, you know, when changing dates close, it's really, really important uh, to know that ahead of time because, you know, again, if we need to restart a quote to make sure we get that eight days out, you get the best price on the policy. Um, claims history is really, really important to find out because if it's uh, if a, the subject property has some claims, um, that can make the rates go up. Um, if the borrower has a claims history, it's good to know that early on so we can find out the best options for that particular borrower. Um, some underwriting issues that, that can make the rate go up. Um, ineligible dogs. Some carriers have uh, dog lists where if it's a pit bull, Rottweiler, Doberman, German Shepherd, um, some carriers will not accept that particular uh, particular quote policy. So it's good to know that so you can you can uh, you know tailor fit that policy if if there's that particular condition. Um, you know if there's diving boards, if there's slides, if there's trampolines, um, it's really important to know that because again some of the carriers won't accept certain uh, certain variables. Um, it's really, really important for the insurance broker, insurance uh, insurance agent to speak with the client uh, to find out about home updates too, because if a roof is brand new, it's good to know that because you know that's gonna give them a better rate on the policy. If, if it's not been replaced, sometimes that can exclude the, that particular policy. If it's over 25 years old and it's a shingle roof, a lot of carriers won't accept that. So it's really good to know that early on. Um, if the pl electrical, plumbing, heating, AC, water heater, uh, all that is is good information to know going into the policy, uh, going into the quote. Um, so why partner with the insurance team? So consistency in each transaction. Uh, you know, you you um, you want to make sure that uh, that each each transaction goes smoothly. And if you know somebody that that's going to be working on that file for that insurance policy, you know that they're going to do a good job. Um, it's taken care of. It's peace of mind for you. It's peace of mind for your uh, for your team. Um, so you know, it's it's important to find a knowledgeable agent with top rated carriers. And that's how I have options. And so, um, you know, we are fast and reliable. Uh, we make sure to provide two or three options to your borrowers. Um, and so, uh, it's also it's also good to know if there's a if there's an issue uh, in the transaction. It's also good to know who to contact, um, who to who to get something fixed from. So, we streamline the insurance process again uh, for your borrowers. We have uh, 27 plus insurance carriers, and we're adding more every day. Uh, we provide the borrower with the best two to three quotes. Um, we have the best rates for insurance. And, you know, once the bar decides to move forward with us, and we take care of that transaction, we get all of the information back over to, uh, to your team to help close that transaction and, uh, and help your, your file close on time. We save your team uh, time and effort in that, in that respect too. Uh, we help to save deals because, you know, especially um, if, uh, if there's a DTI issue, things like that, um, you know, we can help most of 95% of the time. We're able to help and, and uh, find a policy that's going to work for the deal, get things uh, get things moved along in that process. Uh, for new purchases, borrowers and producing HOI, maybe they're a first time home buyer. Um, you know, we step in and hold their hand, help them understand the process, understand the policy, get them a policy that works for the needs, get it closed and send off to your team. Uh, for refinances, they're already looking to save money on the rate, help them save money on the insurance policy. 
So, um, you know, there's a lot of different things that can that can that can uh, cause problems. You know, if if uh, we talked about the claims, we talked about the dogs. Uh, we do have insurance carry uh, insurance carriers that specialize in home insurance. So that's all they do. So they have robust coverages. They have we have one carrier that on a new transaction, on new purchase, uh, they will waive claims. So there's a lot of different a lot of different things that we can help out with. Uh, vacant homes for for fix and flips and things like that. So we'd love to uh, speak with you offline and uh, tell you a little bit more about what we do here.